Well, this is the little greenhouse that started it all. I designed this little greenhouse about a decade ago, and over the years, hundreds of them have been built all over the world. Now, let me show you just how easy it is to build. And if you don't have one of these, you certainly need to build one, and now is the right time. As I'm doing this video, it's January, which is the perfect time to build a greenhouse to get your vegetable plants off to a perfect start for spring. And when it comes to greenhouses, there's nothing quicker or easier to build than this design right here. But a lot of folks have changed it up, and I want to show you a few greenhouses that I've seen here on YouTube where people took my design and just ran with it and made them bigger, nicer, more amenities, and just improved upon this simple design. So again, this is the first one I ever built. The footage is shaky. It's made with an old flip cam, and it was one of the first videos that I ever recorded. So it's not great workmanship when it comes to videography, but this is the greenhouse that started it all. I had never seen anything like it when I came up with this. And before you begin to think that I'm full of myself and that uh, I'm claiming something that doesn't belong to me, I want you to look at this date on this, April 2011. This is when this particular video came out. And I did some research because when I came up with the design, I said, surely someone else has this and is working on it, has worked on it, has put up some videos on it. And I couldn't find anything on YouTube. I looked elsewhere. I found something uh, on Mother Earth Magazine to where they used a cattle panel as a kind of a what I call a grow arch just arching the cattle panel, and they did throw, if I remember right, they did throw a temporary piece of plastic over it for the winter, but nothing like this, nothing that's a standalone greenhouse, and surely nothing that was portable like the one I made, the first one I made here. And I do like the fact that this one, the smaller ones, are portable. Now, some of the ones I'm going to show you are not portable. They're huge, and they've taken the design for a small greenhouse and just extended it to a much greater length which I said was a possibility when I wrote the ebook on building this greenhouse. So this again is, I think, the second greenhouse. This is up on a trailer because I'm selling it to my brother. He's buying it and going to take it about 50 miles to his house. We put it up on the trailer. But this is it. This is the original design that I came up with for a two-panel greenhouse. It's cute. It's attractive. And I don't know of anything I would have done differently, except my original greenhouse had the door swinging inside instead of outside. And many people corrected me on that on my original video, that it should have swung outside, which I agree with. Again, we had it roped off, blocked up, and everything ready to make the trip to his house. But let me show you a few more pictures of some greenhouses using this design that other people have done that I really, really like. I think this is the only one I've seen that they used logs and limbs for the skids, for the outside perimeter, as well as holding up the shelves and stuff. I thought this was pretty creative, pretty, pretty nice touch. And it looks good. It looks real nice just sitting out by itself on their piece of property. Nice, quiet, serene. Came out real well. I was real pleased with this one. And this is from a video where a guy took the exact plans that I made and built a greenhouse uh, accordingly, a two-panel greenhouse. Uh, he made the skids a little bit longer. He used 12-foot skids, I think. But basically everything else is the same and really turned out well. He did a good job building this. There's a look at the back window, the framing. Everything just by the book. This guy went kind of crazy, and he did, I don't know, maybe a six, seven, eight-panel greenhouse. The original design, you could only have a seven-foot-wide greenhouse. A lot of people thought that wasn't enough. They wanted it wider, which is fine. But if you make it wider, you're also, at the same time, lowering the height of the uh, project. So to compensate for that, several people have raised it up on either a two by eight. In this case, a guy looks like raised it up on two foot risers, nailed the cattle panels on top of those and probably made it 12, 15 feet wide, but still kept a nice height on it. 
This is a different one, same process. You've got a riser on both sides and probably eight feet wide. And here's one of the things you can do with this that a lot of people don't think about, and that is a shade house. By putting shade cloth over it, which I'm going to do this year, you can give your plants a respite from the heat and a shelter. With all the, the heat we had last summer, as bad as it was, and all the vegetables and everything suffered just so badly, uh, this would have been invaluable. I wish I'd have done this last year, uh, put the shade cloth over the top of it. But that's one option for these greenhouses is throw a shade cloth on top of it or the fact that it's portable. My small one is. Now, these aren't. These are big. But my portable one, my small one, two-panel, maybe three-panel greenhouse, is portable enough you can drag it uh, up under a tree and then you won't need shade cloth. The tree becomes your shade. Another reason I really like the portability of the smaller greenhouse, my original one. This is just the beginning of someone starting one of their greenhouses. Another one on the inside with landscape cloth on the bottom, which if mine was going to be permanent, I would definitely put landscape cloth on it. I like the, what this guy did here with the vent. You can see the vents he's got on the bottom. Uh, open those up. He's got hardware cloth behind the vents where animals can't get in. And then the, uh, the vents are hinged where you can just pick them up and pull them up with a string and hold them uh, throughout the day, giving him a lot more ventilation. And that is a great idea. I will probably, if I ever make one on a risers like that, uh, I will probably incorporate those of, of those vents like that. Really, really like that idea. A lot of people have asked me about snow load. You know, well, how will this? How well will this do in the snow? I found one video today to where the snow had collapsed one um, and it looked like it was just there was three or four feet of snow on the ground and it had uh, kind of pushed in caved in the one side of it but everybody else that I've ever talked to uh, said that snow does just this right here it either sits on top and then when the greenhouse warms up a little bit it just melts and just falls off the sides but before I show you my favorite greenhouse let me show you some other things that can be done with this design. This served a couple of functions. At first it was a chicken shed and then I turned it into a sheep shed and I just put corrugated metal on it. That's been about 10 years ago and it is still in my back pasture right now. Most of you are familiar with Living Traditions Homestead and this is uh, their rendition of a chicken shed that they built uh, using this design. This is part of the process when they're talking about building it. And here's the final product. Nice little chicken shed. They put chicken wire, put the cattle panel up first, built it standard like I do, and then encased it with chicken wire to keep the chickens in and the predators out. But let me show you my very favorite design, and that is this greenhouse here. It's, it's a channel called Barely Homesteading. And he had a different take. He, instead of putting plastic on it, he used a polycarbonate panel, corrugated panel. And I thought it was just really innovative. So I wanted to show you his a uh, little bit more in depth because this might be what I build next. He used some jigs to make a curved frame to follow the curve of the uh, cattle panel so he could screw the polycarbonate panels to. And this is what it looks like on the inside. You can see the curved... Uh, panels, two befores, you'd have to really know what you're doing to curve two before. so he used plywood, just laminated or layered two or three pieces of plywood together and bent them, screwed them, glued them, and it helped form the end there on that greenhouse to where they could screw the polycarbonate panels into. Just a really a great idea. And again, this might be the next one I build, something similar to this. Beautiful design. The polycarbonate will last so much longer. Uh, they do make a PVC product that's clear like this, that is much cheaper. The polycarbonate is expensive, but it'll take hail. It'll take a lot of abuse. And if you're in an area that gets a lot of hail, hail is tough on plastic. 
go right straight through it. Here's a look from the outside. Again, he's up on risers, so it's larger. It's probably three, maybe four panel greenhouse, kind of hard to tell from here, but just really nicely done. Uh, Barely Homestead uh, really did a great job. With the design I started, he just ran with it and did something a little bit extra on it. Really nice. So the moral of the story is so much can be done with this design. It can be a greenhouse. It can be a sheep shed. It can be a lawnmower shed. It can be chicken house. It can be so many different things. And um, it has just been a privilege of mine to be able to share this with the world and to see other people springboarding on the design that I started. I would say there are hundreds and hundreds of these things built. In fact, I just drove down the street the other day a few miles from my place and I saw one that I had never seen before, so it may be new. But just a great design for a small, portable, if you want to make it portable, if you build it small enough to put on skids, then it's portable, which I like. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning now toward one that is not portable and has the polycarbonate panels, but I'm just not sure yet because I truly enjoy the portability of this thing. But if you're looking to build a greenhouse, you're not going to find one any cheaper than this. I've got links below to the PDF. Um, I've got an ebook on Amazon that gives the dimensions, the angles of cuts on that arches and stuff like that. You kind of need to know that. I've got an ebook that has the same things. Got all the dimensions, got all the uh, material lists and everything you'll need to build a small one, to build a two panel greenhouse. If you're gonna build one bigger than that, you'll have to figure out the dimensions on your own as far as how many more panels to buy and how much more wood to buy and what length to make the greenhouse and such. But if you're looking for a greenhouse, this is it. I'll link below to the original video. It's kind of a how-to. Can you build it from the video without getting the, the ebook? Yeah, probably. But as expensive as lumber is now and other materials, I think I can probably save you some waste, some time, some uh, miscut boards and such. And uh, so it might be worth buying uh, the ebook or the uh, PDF, whichever one you prefer. PDF if you want to print it out, ebook if you just want to look at it on your phone, maybe, or something. But give it a thought, give it a consider, and build you a greenhouse. We never know what's coming and when it will be crucial for us to be able to grow our own food, perhaps, throughout the year. And maybe this is one tool that will help you do that. All right. Hope you enjoyed this little surf through the Internet of Texas Preppers Greenhouse. We're gone.